From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Ready with your Crestview number, Mr. Dollar. Good. Yeah? Mr. Parsons? Who's this? Johnny Dollar. What are you doing in town? Still looking for your son, Mr. Parsons. You met him yesterday. He's been found. He wasn't lost. I met the man you hired to convince me that he was your son. I know he isn't. Listen, if you're going to make trouble... I will if I have to. I have that guy's signature on two papers in my briefcase. It constitutes a witness forgery, no matter how you look at it. I'd be willing to call up a lawyer and see what kind of noise I can make. What do you want? I'll be out to tell you in 20 minutes. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Eastern Casualty and Trust Company, number 25 Yardley Boulevard, Boston, Massachusetts. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Calicles matter. Expense account item 9, $100, legal retainer. I hired an attorney named Robert Watson to arrange for a court order impounding all the records in the Parsons Brokerage House. I also turned over to him the forged reports. After that, I drove out to see Parsons, still laid up in bed. Who spilled the beans? You did, mainly. I didn't believe that guy here yesterday afternoon. I didn't believe the woman who was supposed to be his wife. So let it go at that. I'm here to find David Parsons, Jr. Let's stop playing games. Don't get fresh with me, boy. I've crunched many a loud talker just like you. You want me to walk out of here and start jamming up your works right now, or do you want to listen? You've watched up everything so far. Do I handle it, or do we keep on like this? I'm going to kill you when I get on my feet. In the meantime, you're going to lie there and like it. I came out here to find your son. You arranged to throw me off his trail by hiring a woman to play his wife and a man to appear and pretend he was your son. Let's take it from there. I understand you've had private detectives looking for him all over the country. What agency? Universal Operators. Who's in charge of it there? A man named Underwood. Have they got any leads? Nothing. Nothing for 12 days. Did he take anything? I don't know. We haven't made an audit. Well, there'll be an audit. I've got the machinery started right now. Who do you think... Shut up and lie down or you'll bust a blood vessel. Is Mrs. Parsons in town? I sent her down to Palm Springs. All right, it's 10.15 now. If I remember right, there's a plane from Palm Springs about noon. Call her there and tell her I'll be at her house at 2 o'clock. I want to talk to her. Are you giving me orders? I sure am. I want everybody in that household there. 2 o'clock, you arrange it. I'll arrange nothing for you. Now get out of here. Call who you have to call. 2 o'clock, Mr. Parsons. I left him fuming on the phone and drove my rented car downtown to the offices of Universal Operatives Incorporated. Mr. Underwood, the man in charge of finding David Parsons Jr., shook my hand and told me he could report nothing to me about the case. I asked him to phone old man Parsons, which he did. That changed his mind. He broke down and gave me an hour-long story on what they'd done to locate the missing man. When he was finished, it came out the same way. They'd run into blank walls everywhere. They had no idea where David Parsons might be. I told Underwood he and his staff were fired and that Mr. Parsons would confirm it. I left him fuming on the phone. Expense account item 10, $4, two drinks and lunch all alone. After that, I drove over to the residence of David Parsons, Jr. Mrs. Parsons was a tall, graceful woman in her late 30s, settled on a sofa in front of the fireplace. The clothes she was wearing, the house itself, the appointments of the formal room, all suggested a well-run, well-kept sort of life. I've answered so many questions from those private detectives. I'm sorry to put you through it all again. You must operate in a rather high-handed manner, Mr. Dollar. My father-in-law expressly told me the point here is not to let any of this get into the papers. The point here is to find your husband, Mrs. Parsons. He's been missing 12 days now. Well, I suppose I was the last one to see him. It was after dinner. He went upstairs. I didn't see him after that. This would be... The 13th. Yes, it was. Did he sleep here that night? His bed had been slept in, yes. Then he really disappeared sometime on the 14th. I suppose that's accurate. He wasn't in his office that day. Did he take a car? No. But I know the private detectives checked the cab companies He to could see have flagged one two blocks away. How about clothes? Did he pack anything? Not a thing. Money? I don't know. Okay. 
Can you think of any enemies who might want to harm your husband? Enemies? Oh, dear, no. Think a minute. Well, perhaps in his office, in his business, there's someone. But he never discussed what went on there with me. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? It was a rule. This is our home. That is David's business. We just never talked about what went on in his office at all. How long have you and Mr. Parsons been married? Eighteen years next July. Have you been getting along? Of course we've been getting along. We've gotten along always. Ever discussed the probability of divorce or anything like that? Certainly not. Can you think of any reason why Mr. Parsons would just walk out and not come back? None whatsoever. Have the people in his office been worried about him? Well, I believe Mr. Ecker's the only one who knows. The others think he's away on a business trip. In other words, the whole thing's been kept quiet. Oh, yes, of course. This merger situation is quite delicate. As you Mrs. know, Mrs. Parsons, there's... were you very close to him? I beg your pardon. Don't beg my pardon. Just answer the question. Everybody seems to be worried about a merger, not about a man. Did you spend time together, do things together? Oh, of course. We entertained frequently, we traveled, we had common interests. What? Well, home, of course. What else? I don't know what you mean. Did you enjoy each other, go out together, have fun? Oh, really? <sighs> Did he have a hobby? Well, yes, sort of. David liked to read and write a little. He fancied himself a scholar along some lines. What lines? Literature. Of course, it was just an indulgence. Where did he indulge himself? He had a small study upstairs. Would it be possible to look at that room? Oh, yes, I suppose so. All right, I'll get to that in a minute. Mr. Parson, drink very much? Cocktails before dinner, maybe two or three after. Ever any long drinking jobs on the town? David never went off and drank, if that's what you're trying to find out. Oh, well, that's what I'm trying to find out. Is he in good health? Yes, perfect, I think. What's the name of his doctor? Oh, uh, Stanley Warner, Dr. Warner. Okay. How about his attitude? What do you mean? What kind of man is he? Quiet, loud, what? Oh, I'd say David is, and always has been, a very quiet person. Like his work? Of course, he loves it. His home? I'm terribly afraid there's a great deal of insinuation in these questions you ask, Mr. Dollar. What have you been doing in Palm Springs? <sighs> Resting. Got a boyfriend? Mr. Dollar. Have you? I resent that very much. Naturally, with my husband here, I go out with friends there. David knows about it. He have a girlfriend? You're being ridiculous. No, you're being ridiculous. What? You sit here and describe the kind of association a man has with a drug clerk who sells him cigarettes, and you call it a marriage. Your husband disappears from the face of the earth, and you romp off to Palm Springs, forgetting all about it. You're insulted when I ask you what's wrong. You're hurt when I ask you how come, and you're annoyed when I mention it. What on earth do you want me to do? File a missing person's complaint right away. Get some help in here if it isn't too late. Too late? It could be, lady. It just could be you and your father-in-law have fooled around too long. She made the call. A half an hour later, two detectives from the Missing Persons Bureau were out here gathering facts. I tagged along. They questioned Mrs. Parsons, the servants. They examined the study as well as his bedroom. From all they could gather, David Parsons had nothing but the clothes on his back when he disappeared. By mid-afternoon, the police had started on old man Parsons and gone downtown to question the members of David Parsons' office force. The district attorney moved in quickly and negated my court order, impounding the books and records for a careful audit to determine if any money or bonds were missing. They promised to keep me informed. I went out on my own. Come in, please. Dr. Stanley Warner had a four-suite office on Wilshire Boulevard. He was a big, graying man who looked as though he played a lot of golf and drank a lot of whiskey when he had the chance. I told him about Parsons being missing and asked for some details. Well, according to my records, I examined him the first of last month. He was in good health. Excellent for a man of his age and responsibility. Could you explain that, Doctor? No, oh, I was thinking only by comparison. David Parsons is 40 years old. He's held a position of tremendous responsibility for many years. For a lesser man or for a frailer man, the incidence of organic disturbance in this age area increases considerably. David Parsons' case, that didn't seem to hold true. Doctor, are you talking about the pressure from his father? Do you know the old man? Mm-hmm. I'm talking about that, yes. He... It cracked up a lot of people. How do you suppose David Jr. escaped? He knew how to escape, at least for periods of time, get a complete rest. Was there any indication or any reason whatsoever when you examined him 
to suspect that he might suffer from some sort of uh, mental trouble? No. I'd say that when I examined him, he was in excellent mental shape, too. I see. Did you ever meet him outside the office? Socially? Yeah. Yes. Both belong to the same country club. Played golf with him several times, seen him at dances, other affairs. Mm -hmm. He and Mrs. Parsons strike you as a happy couple? I'll answer that by saying that happiness is uh, intangible. I envied him, though, not because of his wife, you understand, but because with all, the, with all the requirements that were made of him, he was still a gentle, decent man. He ever appear with other women? Not that I know of. Did you ever have occasion to talk with him with his hair down? Once. <laughs> Startled me at first. I was aware that he was a man of education and culture, but I was quite taken aback by his ability to quote the classics. Seemed incongruous somehow. I remember this day we, we met in the club. We had a drink. I don't think anyone was there except the waiters. I was talking to him, and suddenly he dropped off the conversation. He stared ahead, and then he began to quote a Greek... Callicles. Callicles? Yes. I was so impressed by the passage, I took the trouble to look it up myself and write it down. I have it. Yes. Here. I can still see him quoting that word for word. Read it. But if there were a man who had sufficient force, he would shake off and break through and escape from all this. Go on, will you please? He would trample underfoot all our formulas and spells and charms and all our laws which are against nature. The slave would rise in rebellion and be lord over us. And the light of natural justice would shine forth. <sighs> when did Parsons quote this to you, Doctor? Uh, Monday. The day before he disappeared. <laughs> Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's final intriguing episode of this week's story. The answer is with that old Greek who lived 3,000 years ago. Tomorrow we'll find it. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson... It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>